I'm sure, just like me, you're feeling a bit helpless and overwhelmed when it comes to dealing with the bushfire crisis. And we need to remember that this is a marathon, not a sprint. So I've enlisted the help of my good friend and psychologist, Sandy Ray, to help us navigate how to look after our own mental health and that of others during this recovery period. Now, Sandy, this may seem a little bit weird, but you know I'm an animal lover. When it comes to the bushfires, would our pets be traumatised? Well, you know, we've used pets, haven't we, for so many occasions to help humans. And we know that pets and our animals are sentient animals, so they think and feel just like we do. Obviously not with the same attachments that we have, but they do think and feel. We absolutely expect pets to have been traumatised by these fires. And that's not, there's actually not a lot of research to talk about how pets manage and cope after trauma. But because they are sentient animals, we know that we will expect to see traumatised animals. So what sort of sign should you look for in your pet? I guess the most obvious sign is pets will feel very anxious. So textures, smells, some other sort of trigger may set them off. So they might go running into a corner. They might go running under your bed. They may even come and almost cling. It's a bit like a child that they want to get back to their safety zone. That safety zone is the parent or the caregiver. So, you know, we want, we want to give animals a real sense of safety for them to get over their trauma as well. And what other signs? You mentioned to me anorexia. I know, some, do <laughs> some dogs actually go right off their food. Conversely, they fail to eliminate, so they have difficulty go do it, going to the toilet. So they don't want to eat their food. All the things that you would actually expect, perhaps, that we would see in a child. Now, I love my dogs, but I'm not going to be sending them to a doggy shrink or anything like that. But as they're humans, what can we do to make them feel good again? I guess identify, first of all, where is their safety zone? If their safety zone is in the lounge room, for instance, perhaps give them a doggy crate, and I think most people understand what a dog crate is, where the dog has a very clear sense of boundaries, safety, security, and put that doggy crate in the lounge room. It might be in the bedroom. It might be they go hiding in the wardrobe. Don't force your animal, as you wouldn't force a child to come out of the wardrobe if they're fearful, don't grab the dog by their collar or the cat or whatever and make them come out. You need to be responsive to their needs. Don't determine how they should react. I think, you know, compassion and kindness are two of the most important attributes that we can show our animals because those animals give us a huge amount of unconditional love and it's now time for humans to step up and take care of our pets. Do you think that pets could be triggered just the way humans are by sounds or smells? Absolutely. You know, it will be sounds and smells that actually traumatise these animals. So, you know, be kind. If you if there's a, a bashing of the pots or pans or something like that, they're going to be hyper aroused and hyper vigilant, just like humans will be. So again, take some kindness and calm the farm down. Mm -hmm. Don't impose they can get over it because it takes time just like we would expect our own personal traumas to take time as well. Extra cuddles. Extra cuddles. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sandy.